What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Feast, episode 93, the show where you submit replays and we cast them. I'm Deltheus. How's it going? Hope everybody's doing well. I'm not bad. I just got back from vacation to the great state of Indiana. Out of all the weird places to go, right? My uh, One of my buddies from high school lives up there, and I saw a band I really like, Opef, uh, play a concert in Indianapolis, so it was fun. I apologize. I canceled... Last Friday night stream, la kind of last minute. I I thought I'd be able to do it, but yeah, I I had a super early flight Saturday morning. I spent all night scrambling, getting everything together for that. So, anyways, got a good uh, chunk of replays lined up for tonight. I think we got some good variety here. I'm I'm looking forward to this. And on Sunday, we've got the 21 Generals Grand Finals. That's gonna be at 12 p.m. EST noon on the east coast of the United States, and that is going to be hosted by me, casted by me, and Tosh. We're going to co-cast it. It's going to be a lot of fun, so definitely check that one out. <laughs> and, oh, no one goes to Indiana. Dude, it was weird. It, you know, it was relaxing. It was nice to get out, get out of the big city area for a while, and there were some nice, you know, nature trails. We, we did a little hiking. Uh, my buddy is... Full, full rural Indianian man. I don't know how you say that. Like he's got a mullet. He's got a 1987 Camaro. He's got like two broke down cars in his in his front yard. It's the whole shebang, man. So uh, <laughs> you know it's a fun thing to do in Indiana. Pack up your stuff, get out of there, right? Uh, anyways, guys, I'm hyped. It's gonna be a good weekend. We've got Erlu versus Haru, the grand finals of 21 Generals coming up. We've also got a couple other people that have been talking about getting some events going. I need to check in with Jet. Uh, is he still? Has he been doing his Vyashal Kualnes tournaments? I know he's trying to get those going, like as a regular thing. I have uh, I've fallen out of the loop a little bit. I should participate in some of those. I don't uh, I don't play as much as I I probably should, but when I do play, I, I I'm like, man, why am I not? Like I just played a couple games against Jace. That was a lot of fun. Getting that itch again. But all right, guys, enough preamble. He does it once a month. Yeah, is he still doing it? I need to sign up for the next one. I mean, I don't think me and Tosh have ever done a co-cast together. It's crazy. We both cast all the time, but... And we both like each other. It's nothing like that, but... You know, it's it's we're, we're on separate duty, you know. We're kind of passing off the baton to each other back and forth all the time. Like, all right, we got all this crap to cast, and... You know, give half of it to Delphius, give half of it to Tosh, so we never really get the opportunity to actually hang out and cast together. Still is. Next month is soon. Cool, I'll check out that, that challenge and and get that up. Actually, man, I'm slacking. I need to update my Tooth and Tail events section down here. I was going to see if maybe I had a jet. No, man, I'm just going to chit-chat the whole time. Premium bow. We're just going to talk. That's what That's what you guys want, right? You guys just want to listen to Delphius ramble on. Alright guys, let's do it for real. Finson for Sprat Oh, let's go. Okay, in the bottom we've got Bratmo. And up top we've got Vincent. And I'm super hyped because Vincent sent me a ton of Vincent for Spratmo replays. So basically until we get patched again, we have Vincent vs. Spratmo starting out the nights. Which I like. It's old school. It's how we used to do it back in the day. So what's going on here? Both players with the balloon and wolf being a little crazy. Squirrel pigeon, no lizards this match. And uh, actually kind of interesting decks. A weird map. We kind of got this marshy you know, area in between the two mains. Lots of gristmill expansion capabilities here for Bratmo. Fenson's not totally screwed either. He's got an easy natural, you know, he can get over here if he really needs to. Tooth and Tail talk show, that's right. Yeah, man, we need to, we're talking about doing more uh, of the, the VHL role-playing game, too. I'd like to stream it. I don't mind it, I, you know. If the other guys don't want to, we don't have to, but I think it's fun. Typically, people seem to enjoy hanging out with us while we do it. More contents. More blood for the blood gods. I'm sure people enjoy watching Premium Bow scheme to murder us all. 
Last last time, a couple people got murdered, right? Like, I lived... Boy, Master Stealth lived. But he got, like, kind of... Not necessarily captured, but just kind of stuck over with the long coats. And I think one other person lived, right? Uh, yeah, this is a current patch. Yeah, yeah, so Vincent vs. Bratmo, it, it's kind of a an old, older meme, but it checks out. When I first started doing uh, the, the Feast shows back in mid to late 2017 when the game launched, we had uh, Vincent vs. Bratmo, like, all the time as, as some of our original ones. I tried to preserve some of the VODs. If you go back and look at, like, the earlier shows, I had a lot of Vincent vs. Bratmo, and then they kind of stopped playing for a while. They came back to the game, you know, recently. I think they mainly just play against each other and have fun, which is really cool. You know, that's one thing I like about TNT a lot is it's so arcade style. It's definitely something you can just kind of play with your butt. You don't have to be super hardcore Ash Ketchum best there's ever been try hard you know you can just boot it up every now and then with your buddies and that's kind of what Finson and Bratmo are doing here and look at this double balloon I actually really like that that's kind of cool the double balloon plus the barbed wire right there on that double high ground uh that, that's pretty sick and, and Bratmo was coming up for the attack but was forced back the chameleons would do pretty good against the barbed wire to knock that down pretty quickly but he doesn't quite have enough squirrels to really contest you know the the squirrels there from Finson plus those balloons obviously so Force back at the moment, but Bratmo is still in an okay spot. They're winning the uh, farm count at the moment, but Vincent's catching up. Interesting little hidden base over here to the side. Just kind of, well, it serves a couple purposes. Like you could use it to leverage a base trade. You know, you're also giving your opponent false information because Bratmo might come in here to check how many farms that Vincent has. And you know, and get the wrong number. He'd only scout two, when in reality, it's actually five additional farms on top of that first base. So, just gonna hang out for now, grab that campfire, and Vincent's gonna push in with some ferrets of pressure. Now, I think the the lizard meta that we're currently in kind of punishes ferrets, but this time around, we don't have any lizards, so th these ferrets from Vincent could actually get a lot done here. We're just gonna hold hold on for now. You know, I, I like Vincent vs. Bratmo games too because they're not always like super try hard. Like they're they're just kind of having fun, you know. I like having a, a mix of of silly games, a mix of try hard games. Like the the variety is good. So we're going up to two bases here. I might do a little fast forwarding while we're just kind of hanging out, powering up. And bam, we see the big wolf coming down for Vincent. Bratmo's already got his wolf warren down. I missed it. That means Vincent probably hasn't seen it either yet. Vincent hasn't really been able to get in there and scout. And that's kind of an interesting um, vicarious benefit you get from balloons, right? Is it, it makes it pretty difficult to get in and actually scout what's going on. You know, once those balloons get down, they can easily push back enemy commanders. And now we got four ferrets up, which can, can really uh, be devastating devastating if left unchecked this is a cool little turret over here to the side i think it would be more useful if we had lizards this game you know you're you're really kind of running the risk of of getting backstabbed by those lizards but we don't have lizards here so the idea that Vincent's gonna come you know attacking from that angle's probably pretty small but still it's not much of a, an investment for a little bit of peace of mind and these balloons are actually just with the doctor order to, to keep these ferrets pushed back. They're still able to grab that campfire. However, one of those ferrets goes down. Vincent going up to six ferrets. Oh, man. I love it. And, and this is uh, this is rough for Bratmo. He doesn't have any idea of this base over to the side, so he might think that he's in a better spot than he actually is here. And, and now Bratmo's wolf is on the board. But he doesn't... Well, he's got chameleons, I guess. But, man, this, uh, this ferret-wolf combo... Is gonna be crazy. I'd really like to see Vincent take that extra effort to move the ferrets over outside of the rest of the army with the wolf and make sure that they get the buff, you know? I don't think people do that as often as they should. Because then you just run in there. Yeah, there you go. There you go, my man. But the balloons can still get the buff, which is a little bit weird, but hey. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. 
Ooh, gotta be careful, gotta... Oh, not gonna lose a ferret. Yeah, Tasha has a good point. He's probably under too much pressure to really have the chance to, to go over and scout that left base. If you're if you're just tuning in and not super familiar with Tooth and Tail, your 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 point of reference here is the commander. So if I'm playing the game, I'm I'm kind of looking like this, right? So if if Bratmo wants to go scout, he's got to put himself out of position. He doesn't necessarily have to bring his units over there, but if you're not microing your units in an engagement. Unless the armies are just enormous, you're, you're probably going to lose. Like, focus firing and, and bobbing and weaving with, with key units is very critical in, in most encounters. I actually do think there are instances where focus firing is bad. Like, if the... <laughs> Look at all those ferrets! Oh my god! Dude. Alright, Vincent, Vincent wins. I don't care what happens at the end of this game. Like, look at this, man. Six balloons... 10 ferrets. This is hilarious. And he could even, if he wanted to, like, take this other gristmill right here and keep crouching for, keep sneaking forward with those balloons. That would be hilarious. Really cool build here. However, don't count Bratmo out because he's got 14 ferrets on the way. And he's got a wolf of his own, so I wonder if he could maybe... It's rough, though, because cause like Tosh pointed out, it's hard to kind of do fancy things when you're against the Ferret Siege. And unfortunately for Bratmo, he doesn't have Falcons, which would be nice against these Balloons or, or Lizards or something. You know, the best he could hope for, I guess, would be the Chameleons kind of soaking the hits from the balloons and the squirrels taking them out but he doesn't have enough squirrels to really contest six balloons man six balloons balloons are one of those crazy units that when when you get too many of them look at i've never seen this many ferrets never once it's, it's this is ridiculous this is uh this is breaking some kind of unwritten rule here look at this Look at it, it's like a it's like a work of art here. <laughs> Alright, going going for twenty-two, man. Let's get there. Let's get there. You, what do you do if you're Bratmo? What can you do? I guess you just try to backdoor, right? Alright, oh is he finally gonna he's finally gonna find this base. But it's a day late and a dollar short because Vincent's already sucked up all the resources here. So, like, do you maybe... I would I think maybe use the squirrels to take that out and bring the chameleons back to defend, but... That's so many ferrets. If only, if only Bratmo had a single falcon. Just one. One's all you need. He needs more wolves, man. This is not a good ratio of, of, of wolf to ferret. So many balloons. All right, this is this is just this is just silly. This is just this is just some silly nonsense here. Two wolves on the way for Bratmo, just what the doctor ordered. I'm curious. I mean, it looks like on paper, like Vincent's just gonna win this, right? And and well, Bratmo's still got this cabin available to him, so there's that. Well, you know what? You know, in a base race scenario, maybe maybe Bratmo can win this because the chameleons can just cloak right on by these balloons and just snipe all the gristmills. Like, it's very unlikely, but Vincent's gonna go ahead and take an engagement outside of his little protective balloon bubble. A couple of them firing in, and this is gonna go, I think, kind of nicely for Bratmo with, with all things considered here. Yeah, a lot of those fin uh, ferrets going down. You know, Vincent's got a much higher army supply. Keep in mind, a lot of that is wrapped up in those balloons. But if you look out how much that went down compared to Bratmo, definitely a good engagement there for Bratmo. And yeah, I think I think Bratmo can win this if he if he tries to go for the base race. But he's gonna have to act fast, and he's and he's not committing to it as Vincent is pushing in. Now, if Vincent can grab this Grismill. And then bunny hop his 
his balloons even further forward. He did manage to put together another ridiculous amount of ferrets. 23. A 24th on the way. <laughs> 30 ferrets. Dude, smelly paws. I know, man. It's crazy. We got... It's 16 chameleons. Don't forget about that. Alright. Alright, there we go. That corner that corner pocket base getting knocked down here for Bratmo. Bra Bratmo's gonna come home and try to defend against this. I think Bratmo's army is better in this direct engagement without the balloons supporting these ferrets. Nice little stutter step micro here by these ferrets, but that's not super duper effective in, in Tooth and Tail. Those ferrets taking a beating there, but this time around trade a little more effectively. And yeah, here comes the shelling. Look at this. This is awesome. Oh, those buffed up chameleons are moving forward. Trying to push Finson back yet again, but he's got a nice little cluster of balloons here to retreat to. Yeah, Finson could like grab this base. He could keep leapfrogging those balloons forward, but here's Brent's, uh, Bratmo goes. Trying to go for this base race. He's got enough food floating to where he can kind of just start taking these gristmills in response. And <coughs> Excuse me. I am getting over a little bit of a cold. I was actually considering not casting tonight and just like playing ladder instead. Like I'm trying to stay consistent on doing tooth and tail content every Friday night, but I got sick earlier this week. I'm starting to get over it. So hopefully my voice doesn't give out until before the end of this. Yeah, Vincent defending here is going to... God, look at all that shelling. That's so nuts. The one whoop is still up here from Bratmo. And these chameleons are starting to fall. But not before taking out the majority of the ferrets. Only three ferrets left, too. All right. What do you do if you're Bratmo here? You sell off the wolves. Do you just go... I think you can just go straight chameleon, right? And the idea is is to just try to snipe bases. Because you're never going to push through these balloons. It's just not happening. You don't have the money. Well, maybe if you had, like, a crazy amount of squirrels and hit, like, at the right angle. But I think it's safer to just try to, try to snipe this mill with some cams out of the shadows. But another whoop, it is on the board here for Bratmo. These ferrets pushing up again. Gonna get punished, but some critical structures did go down. And I don't mind that Bratmo's got a little bit of, of food in the bank here. Because I, I think we're approaching base race territory, and you're gonna want that, that additional food to be able to build mills here. But every time Bratmo steps out on the map, it gives Vincent the opportunity to come in and start shelling down his base. And then he's also pretty much home in time to defend as well. And yeah, Bratmo was trying to sneak through, but not all of his units are stealthy and, and lost a lot of those important units there. The wolf going down, even those squirrels going down for, for free really hurts, you know, when you're in scrappy situations like this. And Vincent has amassed another 10 ferrets. Dude, how many ferrets have been built this game? Like 100? I don't think I'm exaggerating. Hey, at least like 50 guaranteed. Somewhere in the, the ballpark of 50 to 100. These squirrels up front tanking for the ferrets. That's actually... Kind of nice, it de-stealthed a lot of those chameleons. We we're going to take some hits there. What a crazy game. What a good one to start the night off with. It looks like Vincent's kind of got it from here, but let's see. If, if Bratmo can actually get a good wipe, and you know what? These chameleons are all buffed up, and they just wreck through the, uh, uh, the entire line of those ferrets. Wow. Good instinct from Bratmo to, to turn and fight there. Those buffed up cams. 
doing some insane damage. But keep in mind, Fenson's still got so many resources, even though he's kind of starting to mine out. Like, he's still got a mining base, number one. And number two, he's got all these warrants, he's got all these balloons, which can easily be sold and turned into, like, say, squirrels, you know. So Fenson's not out yet, even though that was a wonderful engagement there for Bratmo. He's going to need a couple more of those. And Bratmo's going to start starving soon, and there's really not any real estate left on this map you know all these bases are completely farmed out the only one that's left is this one but that's just not happening with those balloons uh right there in sniping range so bratmo's got to end the game right here right now and i think he was probably looking up there for like maybe an extra campfire or something like that but unfortunately un uh, anti climax well you know what he's got this cabin or the campfire rather that still got some meat on it he can take that there you go. All he's got to do is sneak in. Sneaky, sneaky. Snipe that base. And snipe this base. Sniping this one is going to be harder. But maybe Vincent sells some of these balloons soon. Ooh, ouch. That's rough. Gonna try to take the engagement, but under these balloons, it's just not going to happen. And I think this is where Bratmo is going to be forced to tap. Really cool game. And uh, Ferret Master Fincent here is going to be taking it. Very entertaining. Oh, is he going to starve? Oh, Bellify going down with the ship, man. Really, uh, really fun match number one there. <laughs> okay, let's keep things rolling into match number two. Spawning in the bottom, we've got Batya and their opponent up top, the Gentleman. Cool. All right, the gentleman's deck looks really strong. And, uh, very, very tried and true, in my opinion. A good, uh, good ladder deck. And Batya's deck looks good as well. You know, the lizards are super meta at the moment, so the toad pick to try to deal with those seems good. I think, I think lizards are, are kind of at the point in the, the current meta though, where it's like the best way to deal with lizards is lizards. You know. However, I like the style of what Batya is going for here, trying to rock that fox and balloon. Going for something a little different, a little quirky. I dig it. But let's see how it holds up against this just very, very strong standard deck here from the gentleman. I think the boar is a very solid pick in this uh, very heavy lizard meta. You know, the boar does fantastic against lizards. So let's see how this one plays out. Maybe Batya wants to go for some kind of Fox Rush. Those, those kinds of builds aren't as strong as they have been in the past. It could certainly work out against some of the units the gentleman has. Really, the lizards are the only thing that's concerning to me as a, from a Fox perspective here. You know, the Fox should do well against pretty much anything else. But getting that Fox up safely is no small feat. I, I feel like the best way to get out of Tier 3... Nowadays is just the standard, you know, build a little bit of tier one into a second base, get like half saturation, maybe get like a tier two, and then go into that tier three. Try and do like any kind of wonky one base tier three stuff. Typically doesn't work. But that, yeah, actually going for a fast tier two opening, which is something you used to see a lot, not as much nowadays. And chameleons are great. They do good against the lizards. I think chameleons are just kind of undisputably the strongest tier two at the moment tier two is in a decent spot though i feel like i try not to talk too much about balance because it's a hot topic and everybody's an expert right and uh, but you know I, I feel like all the tier two is viable 
maybe snakes and ferrets are a little bit weaker, but I, I actually don't mind snakes and ferrets being, like, situational, because I think that's what they're designed for, you know? Like, snake is supposed to be, like, a situational answer to tier 3. You know, ferrets are supposed to be situational to where you can abuse the map and that sort of thing. All right, we see that fox going down pretty early. This is, I think this is a way, uh, even though earlier I just said, like, doing one base or early fox is, is hard. Oh, gentlemen, going to come in here and sneak this farm out. Good value there. Which is going to be even rougher, make this fox build even rougher. I, I, I think this might be kind of a way to, to, to get the fox back in the meta. You know, is you gotta you got to get him with a weird timing. But the problem is you really need every little bit. You know, when you do things like that. And Gentleman just picking up 60 food for free is pretty rough. However, Gent is macroing up. But but Gent's not going crazy on, on economy. You know, he, he's kind of evolving and moving forward at a very reasonable rate in, in really all regards. You know, expanding economy, applying some pressure, scouting, teching up the army a little bit. And is he going to come in and see the fox? He is. And you know he's probably fine with that. I wonder what it, if, what he's gonna respond with if anything. Maybe some more lizards. Like he's got four cams. He can set up that classic fox ambush with that. Yeah, yeah. So he's trying to set up the the cams in a position where the fox will kind of like run by and and get hit. Tickle Bandit asks if, if ferrets are weak. I, I, I mean, in a, in a broad... I don't think they're weak, but I, I think they're situational. If that makes sense. Like, in a, in a direct engagement, you'd probably rather have something like cams or ferrets, but, you know, in, in, on the right map, in the right positioning, ferrets can be absolutely devastating. And I, I think that's correct. Don't get me wrong. I, you know, you don't want units like ferrets or snakes to be too, too powerful. Oh, and the Chameleon Ambush is going to work. That always feels bad, man. That uh, definitely breaks a Fox player's heart. And now I think... Uh, this is always such a rough spot. I, I, I think the right move is to sell the Tier 3 Warren. You just kind of have to count your losses and be like, all right, I lost 180 food. Let me see if I can salvage the game elsewhere. You really want that Fox to get some kind of value in before it goes down. But Gentleman knows... The position that bat is in and it's gonna come in and apply pressure oh these toads actually get some good hits nice defense so far from bat yeah all things considered let's see if he can hang in there that base going down is just gonna be too much really cool game you know nice uh nice job from bat yeah trying a little bit of an off-brand strategy there but but just straight up solid play from the gent as to be expected All right, let's hop into match number three. Spawning on the left, we've got Big Pimpintosh. It is opponent to the right, J Stream Master. All right, Tosh's deck looking silly. <laughs> I think I mentioned last stream or something that uh, this deck looks silly and Natasha was trying to justify it. I still think it's silly. It was a little different than this one in particular. But, you know. Three defense, two tier three. That 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 is that is a silly deck, sir. But I love it. I love silly decks. That that's that's uh it's one of our, our number one exports here on Tooth and Tail TV is ridiculous comps. So Tosh, with some craziness here. Jace also living on the edge with the comp, you know. I don't I don't think Jace is is crazy, but it's it's close, you know. It's close to being crazy. Double tier three in the form of Fox Owl. It's kinda neat. You know, back in the day, there used to be this like What do you call it? Like, a little bit rock, paper, scissory, I guess, between Fox, Owl, and Badger. 
So sometimes you would see players like take the fox and the owl, that way you can have the rock and the scissors, you know? Like if they if they go badger, alright, I got the fox that beats that. If they go fox, I got the owl that beats that. And, uh, it's kind of cool. I like the concept because the fox is a little bit more of this like aggressive mid mid gamey tier three, you know, trying to run around and make plays and stuff. Where the owl is just kind of that tier three version of the falcon, where it's like, oh, I'm just gonna dump a bunch of money in these, and once I hit a critical mass, there's not a whole lot you can do. Oh no, I'm super hyped. I love innovation. I think it's I think it's cool when when people try new things. Oh man, I didn't notice the sick turret. Very nice. Actually got that down before the Grismal finish of the territory was expanded out. So Tosh is doing uh, something a little bit reminiscent of the old pile style, you know, where you've got a whole bunch of defense and you're gonna try to contain your opponent and bully them. Pile used to to back that up with lizards, so you kind of run around and harass your opponent from every which angle and slowly kind of vice grip them with, with defenses. And this map, you know, it it looks like it's got a pretty even economy split. However, Tosh is trying to bully Jace out of that. You know, if, if Tosh can can secure this mid 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 ground and prevent Jace from grabbing a couple of those grist mills, that'll tilt tilt the map a lot in his favor. Nice little run around attack here from Jace, sniping that pig, being a thorn in Tosh's side, and yeah, exact enforcing a reaction with that turret. You know, if 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 Jace never does that again, then this turret is just wasted money. But I agree with putting the turret there for sure. But Tosh is just trying to reinforce this front line while continuing to build up economy. Meanwhile, Jace, although does have two tier three in the deck, you know, so far the build's been pretty normal. Now I'm going to go ahead and transition over to an owl and just try to eco up. You know, when you see your opponent building a whole bunch of defense, sometimes the correct answer is to just sit back, tech up, eco up. You can run the risk of just getting checkmated, though, if, if you're not careful, if they just build, you know, a million balloons here like we saw in that fencing game. But generally, if your opponent's building defense and ecoing up, you can just eco up and not build the defense and be ahead. But yeah, you gotta be careful because if Tosh gets out of control, it's kind of a double-edged sword. Because you're really investing in that strategy. You're going to say, all right, man, my comp is just going to rail through that defense, rail through whatever comp that you have. Because, you know, Tosh is, is putting his feet down here. He's got concrete shoes on. He's not going anywhere. Double already. Three turrets, four turrets. Another balloon probably on the way here shortly. And this defense is actually positioned in such a way that it gives Tosh access to all these bases. And not only that, but it contains Jace to only having these three, right? So this is looking really good for Tosh so far. So let's see how Jace wants to react to this, you know? Jace is a little bit newer to the scene, but he's a great player. And sometimes you get thrown little interesting puzzles like this that maybe you've never had to solve before. And this is kind of meme -y, but, you know, it's working, right? I, I don't think Tosh is playing with his food or anything. Like, he's going for a strategy here. It's just off the wall. And Jace is going to try to answer with just an insane amount of owls like we were talking about earlier. Can work really well, however... Jace doesn't really have an answer for the balloons. I, I guess, like, with a whole bunch of squirrels to back up. Yeah, like, maybe in the late game, if you just have a crazy amount of squirrel, owl, or even lizard owl, you know, the owls will take care of everything but the balloons, and the squirrels get in there and knock those balloons out. But we're kind of going to an interesting spot here because Jace is going to have crazy value from these six owls once they all get up. Uh, you know, these free mice that are coming out of these owls. So, so Tosh is going to be bleeding resources. But, he, I mean, look at this so far. These, these mice not even killing a turret. But imagine they did. Imagine they killed a turret or two, right? 
which is eventually what's going to start happening. Couple couple defenses are going to go down with every wave of owls, uh, owl mice rather. You know that's okay for Tosh because he's going to have so many resources available. But the question is, how does Tosh in how does Tosh turn on the aggression? He can't quite expand the territory out any further. Well, I guess if he gets that Grismo, like, actually, it's not out of the question that Artie might be able to uh, get a lot done here. Look at this sneaky fox getting all the bacon. Jace out of position to, to deal with this. Jace probably also just unaware of the fox coming out in general. And now the wolf is here, so the wolf is probably just going to sit here and, and keep this fox buff. So the fox can come home, get the buff, go run around, rinse and repeat. So Tosh is going to try to be wherever Jace isn't and just poke down on pigs. But again, Jace is putting together an army comp that is just so value, right? Like, seven owls is crazy value. So, in a way, you know, that fox knocking down a farm every now and then is not the end of the world for Jace. Because every time Jace is going in for an engagement, they're not trading anything. Ooh! Almost going to hit that other mine. Is it going to go down? Yes, it is. Nice job there by Jace. Knocking out that fox to mines. Always super annoying for fox players. And super satisfying for the miners. Blah, blah, blah. So much puking. All right, here we go. One of these big, huge, juicy waves of mice. And yeah, gonna knock down just a couple defenses, nothing crazy, a couple turrets going down, the Arties still remain. But you know, that's a food loss for Tosh. But Tosh has access to so much extra resources that they can deal with it. And if you're Jace, you're just gonna have to start taking these pigs. It's almost a blessing in disguise that that fox came in and knocked out a lot of these pigs, because Jace needs to, to take these pigs almost one at a time, right? To, to stall out the starvation. You know, we call them, we call them starvation pigs in the business, where you leave a couple empty farms, that way you can come in, you know, right when you hit starvation, build a farm, and then five minutes later, rinse and repeat. You know, I, I think with this cop, though, eventually, Jace should win, I think. But it's hard to say, because Tosh could, has access to so much more money here. This is, this is a weird one. More mice moving forward. <laughs> and this, is, this is kind of a, a stalemate-y position. The balloons giving that extra vision to those artillery cannons, really making full use of that range there. And, you know, now we're just kind of looking at tooth to tail artwork, you know? Like, is this real life? Is this a campaign mission? Feels like Jace is in a campaign against the CPU. Or, uh, from Tosh's perspective, it's like he's playing a tower defense game. It's like, alright, survive the waves of mice for so long until your opponent starves. And Jace is slowly sneaking out more and more owls. It's definitely the move. We saw a million ferrets earlier, now we're seeing a million owls. This is not something you see very often. So the question is, can Tosh run in between these waves with his fox and get value over time? Because he's going to continue... There's not a whole lot more analysis I could really say here, right? Because it's like, Jace has all the free units, is going to keep trading super effectively. But Tosh has the extra income, and there we go. Yep, this is where Tosh can get his value. Where he just comes in here and just boops all those pigs down with the fox. I think Jace is, is being a little bit shy with the mines. Actually, I think he tried to build more mines, but the artillery cannon knocked them down. Uh, 
I don't think Jace needs to be fancy. If I was Jace, I'd probably just attack in right here. I don't think I'd move my owls down. I think I'd just keep pushing, keep shoving in right here. Because he's got 10, right? So you're going to get value. Like, when he tries to come shove over here, he's leaving himself open to the possibility of the fox coming in and, and booping, booping him on his snoot, hitting him in the bacon. But I also think Jace is maybe trying to prioritize hitting over here because he wants to hit the farming base. Well, I don't think so. I think if Jace just continued to move in and hit that over and over, like, look at all those mice, man. I think the trick to Jace winning here is just not let that fox get value. Like, see, what? Two turrets went down. Jeez, that's it. So that's 120 food. <laughs> <coughs> this is bananas. Yeah, I think I think a lot of people already saw this live on, on Tasha's stream earlier. Trying to be cute with these angles here. Find whatever spot he can to get in. I don't think it's necessary, though. I think Jace just stands here and pushes the, the mice in. And rinses and repeats. That way he's both defending his one pig at Yeah, I think you just do one pig at a time. That way you can live as long as possible, right? Because of starvation timer. But Jace really can't afford to lose a, that single pig. Just doesn't have the income. Ooh, the wolf getting close, but is going to live. Tosh is starting to reinforce this with some squirrels here. Man, I thought the first game was weird. We were seeing some, some interesting stuff tonight. This, this is a good show so far. And I think Tosh is, is starting to get cognizant of the fact that he's gonna have to delay the game with his farms too. You know, start building the start keeping mine starvation farms. Oh no, okay, Jace needs to sell a mine. He he built a farm on something that was already kind of fallow. But the super uh, two hundred IQ play here is to wait till your starvation counter is super low. You know, that way you can get out that extra forty five seconds or so or near a full minute if you like to live on the edge. I'll go ahead and just knock out that, that campfire. I think that's fine, but again, I, I don't think it's necessary to, to move the owls out of position like this. If Jace ends up losing, I, I think that might be part of the reason why. Kind of interesting to try to find uh, unique angles of attack, but you just got so many free units, man. There's no way that... Yeah, see, that's what I'm talking about. Since, since Jace is out, out of position, that fox able to run in, snipe down that pig, Really smart play here from Tosh. Picking off mice, because hey, why not? But gotta be careful. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Sells off an owl. That's alright, we still got nine. Still got nine on board. But needs to be careful get, getting out of position over here again. And also, the funnel through is super good for the Arties. Honestly, though, I wonder if it'd be smart to try to base race here if you're Jace. Like, he's kind of carving a path, you know, through the backside here. Like, do you just walk your owls back here and just start knocking out all these, all these grist mills? What's Tosh got? He's got 10 squirrels. I guess you don't want to underestimate 10 squirrels buffed, buffed up by Wolf. That could probably take down your, your gristmills pretty quickly. Jace wants to get back up to that 10th owl. Might be a little bit of a pipe dream. Well, maybe not, you know? He's got nothing else to spend his money on. You know, the units aren't costing him anything here. We've had some crazy matches tonight. So Tosh can only live for about another 10 minutes, and yeah, this is the this is the issue. Once Jace goes in to attack elsewhere, Tosh can just move in and hit. And now that one hurts, because now Jace has got to rebuild the Gristmill. 
And yeah, gonna have to sell off an owl warren here to, to be able to build another pig. Yeah, this is match number three. We're almost an hour in. The first match was like 20 minutes long too. But you know, nine owls, still pretty good. Jace was able to get back up to the one farm. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Now, now has Tosh gotten to the critical mass of 10 Arties? Like, are the owls just not gonna do anything anymore? Pow, 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 double fox, double buff fox. Yo, know, I gotta say, really cool style here from Tosh. Definitely, definitely some big style points. And I think Jace did a good job trying to to fight back against this. I think uh, I think the plan of getting all the owls out was correct. But I think Jace's downfall here was just stepping a little bit out of position with these attacks and, and leaving himself open for for Tosh's counter. And now, unfortunately, though. We're in this position where Jace kind of has to step out of position if, if they want to continue attacking because hitting the front line is just not going to work. I don't think these mice are getting anything done anymore. A couple squirrels go down. That is just so many artillery. Ooh, those fox can't quite get the hit on the pig though. Man, Tooth and Tail can get into some weird positions sometimes. But now that Tosh has kind of secured this middle base. The, the creep forward can continue. And Jace is just going to get pushed into a corner. These artillery can start leapfrogging up, and these artillery will actually be in range to hit the gristmills of his opponent. I mean, it can't go on for another hour. Well, actually, now that Tosh has his base, it could go on, yeah, for, for quite a while longer. That is true. Dude, look how much wasted ammunition. Think of the logistics. Look, what about the poor warehouse workers? I gotta put all these, these bullets together that are just falling for nothing. What about all these poor mice? Who's gonna write home to, to Mama Mouse? and tell her that, that her boys ain't coming home. The civilized, just, they just have no... Bellified's capitalist heart here is breaking with all this, all this wasted money. Jace is doing some good bobbing and weaving though. Hanging in here. But the, I, I feel like the problem is that the mice are just no longer dealing damage. There's too many artillery. Like for, for Jace to have, to have a chance here, these waves of mice have got to like knock out a cannon or at least a turret or something. Twenty-three minutes in. That's all right. I guess we'll have a little bit of a extra extra feast tonight. We're doing twelve. We're still doing twelve games. I don't care if we go longer. My voice hasn't given out yet, but I feel it. I apologize if I cough. I tried to hit that mute button. I need to set up a, a mute button a hog key. I don't know why I haven't done that. Probably because I'm not. Uh, I'm a terrible streamer. Yeah, man, we're getting we're getting seconds tonight. We're we're going longer than the than the the promised two hours. Jace, fighting back here, getting something done, and you know what? Tosh might have countered his his chickens before they kept they hatched here, because Tosh has not set himself up to have a starvation farm. Tosh needs this base. He needs 
a farm there. He could have left himself a couple back here, but he didn't. He was too confident. So if Jace can just keep applying pressure to this main base, he could actually win here. All Jace has to do is keep this pig up, make sure that the Fox Rass does not kill his last remaining pork buddy, and just refuse to let Tosh get any farms down here, which might be possible. But as I say that, look at all those artillery cannons. Jeez. I wish we had, like, statistics in this game, you know? Like, artillery cannon shots fired or mice killed or something like that. It would be insane. Oh, that crystal's almost going down. Ooh, this is starting to hurt for Jace. He, he's no longer got these sneakier back bases that he can take, or back farms, rather. He's going to have to start putting those pigs up front. A little bit riskier positions. This mill will go down. Yeah, Tosh definitely shot himself in the foot here by not leaving some extra farms back here. This is giving Jace a chance to actually win this game through starvation. I'm kind of I'm kind of interested now because I had paint in this game as basically checkmate for Tosh but now that Tosh actually needs this base maybe Jace has a chance here blue, 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 blue. yeah look at all that smoke Dude, the ground would just be would just be craters at this point there should be like negative high ground there should be low ground all around here Ooh! Shot right in the pig. Got him right in the pork. Alright, another farm coming up for Jace. What's kind of interesting is like the... While the pig is being built, Tosh can't do anything about it, you know? He's got to wait till it's actually up before that fox can get in there. And they're getting lower and lower from Jace's side. Jace does have to be patient and make sure that he builds up a critical mass of mice before moving in. You know, ha half mice saturation isn't going to do it. He needs a full spawn from the owls here. As many mice as possible to have the mass to actually get in through the arties. Are we gonna get it this time? Looks like it. Now Tosh is gonna have to start selling stuff. Gonna have to start selling stuff to rebuild this mill. What's getting sold? The pig is still up and the mice block the fox shot. Nicely done. Oh man, Jace could win this. I think I'm getting I'm thinking I'm getting over on team Jace here maybe maybe baby what do you get rid of I don't think you want to get rid of that balloon you want that vision you probably don't need two woofs although the woof buff already is hilarious yeah I think a wolf or a fox is maybe on the chopping block since you're gonna one shot that pig with a fox anyways but Jace is doing a good job of keeping these mice in the right position to block Tosh from killing that pig. And Tosh sold Nardi. So if Jace can just rinse and repeat this, where, you know, every once or twice this mill goes down, Tosh has got to sell an Nardi to, to rebuild it. He might eventually wiggle his way through. He did have to go down to nine owls, however, he's got a lot of money in the bank to rebuild those pigs. And yeah, Jay should wait. He should wait till his starvation counter is almost down to rebuild a pig. He doesn't need money. He just needs to not be starving.
yeah, Jace just seems to hang on, wait till that starvation counter is as low as he's comfortable letting it get. This is starting to work. Tosh is bleeding out. Twenty-nine minutes in. An owl actually died. That's interesting. Maybe a fox got a lucky shot on it or something. Oh, and Jace starved out? Oh, no way. Ah, oh, Jace. That's funny. Nicely done. Crazy game. Is that what happened? I think, yeah, I think Jace's star starvation counter went down, right? They just forgot to throw that, uh, that farm down at the last minute. That's a ris risky take when you are trying to... To, to get as much time value as you can out of that. <laughs> really interesting game, though. Thanks for the submission. Yeah, I think I think you had that, Jace. If you if you uh, if that if you would have got the pig down, that was crazy. That was really cool, though. Yeah, totally understandable. There's so much going on. It can be easy to, to forget that kind of thing from time to time. I almost... I, I, I was questioning why the game ended, you know, and I'm sitting here just observing, and I wasn't even keeping track of the starvation super closely. All right, cool. We got a, a replay submission from the old school guy. Cyanide Trick, happy to see that. Welcome back to the fold. Always happy to have you here. Let's get into it. I wore his will to play down. All right, over on the left, we got Gun Shooter. His opponent to the right, Cyanide Trick. All right, Gun Shooter I've never heard of. I'm always hesitant to get excited about, like, seeing new names I haven't heard of. And, oh, like, new player, because people do use uh, Smurf names and stuff like that, hide their identity. But Cyanide Trick is an old-school name. Glad to see them coming back and, uh, and shooting me a replay here. And you know they're old school, man, because this, this mole rush, this is a four farm mole rush. This is some, some DJ Soak stuff going on right here. And Gunshooter did sniff it out. Gunshooter is new, cool. Well, really good game sense for a new player. Now, these kinds of mole rushes aren't as deadly as they used to be, especially once you sniff them out. I think the right thing for Cyanide here is to just pack it up and, and, and go home. Nice try, but but gun shooters got a great defense. These barbed wire, gonna you know losing a little bit of money off those. Barbed wire is cheaper now, isn't it? Yeah, barbed wire got a reduced cost. Yeah, t aren't they ten? Yeah, ten, ten food. So not not the worst in the world, but good defense there from gun shooter. Even picking up that mole warren too on the way home. So cyanide trick trying some aggression didn't quite work out. I always love to see that kind of stuff though. Eight farm openings every single game can get boring, so so swapping in a rush every now and then is is definitely good. And we even see people at top level play do that. You know, James likes to do that a lot. It is one of those things that you know most players, if if they catch you, they know, they know how to respond to it correctly. Sometimes you just don't see it coming. I, that happens to me every now and then because I'll just assume my opponent's going eight farms, you know. Not even thinking about it. And maybe I'm trying to be greedy and scout the rest of the map or something. And then all of a sudden you get rushed. So Cyanide Trick gonna transition into five farm tier two. Let's see if this works for him. Uh, Gunshooter did s scout it out. And so far, Gunshooter's playing pretty, pretty safely, I think, you know, macroing up. Getting that second base, getting uh, getting some farms, getting some tier one. Nothing crazy. Cyanide Tricks being the madman over here. Now let's see if it works out. One chameleon on the board. Chameleons are really strong right now, and they have really high uh, like playmaking capacity since you can just come in out of the shadows, you know, snipe a farm, snipe a warren or something like that. Recloak, get out of there. Ooh, that... Chameleon going down is a rough loss there from Cyanide Trick. Nice pickup for Gun Shooter, though. Gun Shooter's gonna press forward. I think this is smart. Cyanide Trick doesn't have a whole lot to defend, but one Chameleon 
can do surprisingly well in small engagements like this. Cyanide does get the stealth that time around. And Cyanide, without any lizards or squirrels, just relying completely on these moles. It could work with those falcons in the back. You know the moles helping to tank up front. The, the falcons dealing the damage. But Cyanide Trick needs a much better economy to, to pull something like that off. You know, to, to build up to four, even six falcons. It's going to take some time. And so far, I think Gunshooter has been playing this great. The barbed wire here and there, you know. I, I like that a lot. I, I think it's cool where you just have like one or two pieces in, in specific spots. This actually isn't too bad against these cams either because they're going to run into it, you know, stealth. Even though the chameleons can hit the barbed wire and knock it out like that, if you're trying to do sneaky, like, walk my chameleons through situations like that, I think that actually would trigger... Does that trigger you, you barbed wire players? I, I hardly ever play with wire, but... If your wire takes damage, does that trigger your bases under attack alert? Because if so, uh, that's actually really good against chameleons, right? Because even if the chameleons are trying to sneak by, if they walk through the barbed wire, then you get the trigger that your base is under attack. You know the chameleons are trying to, to come forward. All right, Badger on the way for Gun Shooter. I think it's a pretty well-timed Badger too. I think I think the nice, like, standard safe time to take a tier three is when you got about that half saturation on your second base. You know, you got maybe a tier two out. You got a lot of tier one. That's a nice chance to just kind of sprinkle that tier three unit in. And once Gun Shooter gets his Badger out, probably gonna go for that big attack. The Chameleon can do good against the Badger if they get the surround. But all these melee units from Cyanide could be pretty easily uh, bait or kited here by the Badger. I like this mine pit, though. Maybe if the Badger walks right through all these mines, Cyanide could do something. Cyanide's now aware of that Badger. Nice little second base. Actually, the economy for Cyanide is really far behind. Gun shooter here. But the wolf is on the way. Six chameleons in a dream. I mean, on paper, this is looking real good for gun shooter. Gun shooter didn't go for uh, uh, the... Oh, uh, this is pretty smart. He's, he's baiting the commander back out of position with his commander while these chameleons just get in here. And, and put the hurt on. You're gonna sneak out with all these chameleons still alive. Very nicely done, getting a lot of value there. One of those chameleons actually does end up going down to the barbed wire on the retreat out. So many mines here. Cyanide trick. This is such a crazy way to play. We've seen some crazy games tonight. Really interesting stuff. Like, this is so many mines. And the problem is, I run into this issue too, right? If you're a gun shooter and you start moving out into these mines, you start thinking to yourself, surely they can't have more mines, right? Like, after you trigger the first couple, and then there's just more and more. There's just so many mines. Now, the modern mines have a really fickle detonation radius. I'm trying to sneak these chameleons through. But, oh, look at that. So many mines going off on gun shooter. Chameleons. Wrecking everything, cyanide trick, sign my mouse pad, dude. This is such cool play. That's actually working out really well. This is so funny. I think Gun Shooter's doing a great job too, don't get me wrong. But I mean look at this. It's like four farms versus fourteen, you know? And he's making it happen by really abusing these powerful stealthing units here. Gonna go ahead and just knock out these tier 3 warrants. I'm gonna try to 
try to sneak out of here with all his, his cams alive. Now, this is a little bit risky for Cyanide Trick because he can't lose his commander. If his commander goes down, all his cams are going to go down, and he's going to try to burrow home. That way he could hold the rally button and walk his chameleons out of there. Kind of an interesting decision there, but ends up really getting punished for it as Gunshooter cleans up all those cams, getting Gunshooter back on the board. And again, Gunshooter's just got a phenomenal economy here. So if they can just kind of no-nonsense get in there, maybe use these toads or the squirrels to mine sweep. You know, I think Cyanide, Cyanide Trick did such a good job here baiting. Like, he had all the binds right here. The barbed wire was over there. Brings a chameleon. I wish I was, like, one of those football uh, casters from the 90s, right, where they have the big marker screen. Like, hit the, hit the barbed wire there, and then these units come in, hit the mines. Like, that was insane. Again, with all the mines, as Gunshooter is trying to put some pressure on, but just walking into the minefield and getting hammered by the chameleons. What a crazy game. Gunshooter deciding to go for some toads. Trying to get some big explosions on these cams, but just gonna hit the mines instead. And again, these cams are gonna come out of the shadow, clean up most of the, the stuff of his opponent. The cyanide shooter is starting to just zap Brannigan his way through. He's got so many resources, he can just throw some units away and be fine with it. But this Chameleon Death Squad, great band name, by the way. I'm just making it happen. Six cams and a wolf, but the wolf is just sitting over here getting more money out of those farms. Some crazy matches tonight. I do gotta take the moment and say, don't be shy, man. Send replays to me, toothandtailtv at gmail.com if you wanna see me continue to make shows like this. I'm almost out, I do need more for a show next week. So it's on, it's on you guys, the community, to send me replays. Some good toe connections there. Only a couple chameleons left, so Gunshooter might actually end up taking this in the long run. Even though Cyanide Trick's been doing some cool 360 no scope double kickflip kind of plays here. Make sure they're all at least 20 minutes long. No. The idea is not to troll Deltheus. You guys you guys love to hate me. And you hate to love me. It's a it's an abusive relationship we've got here. Just trying to ram into these grist mills here. A couple chameleons continuing to respawn here for, for Cyanide, trying to trying to hold on. What a weird game. It's been a weird show. I need to go like take a shower after this or something. Contemplate life. Go watch the sunset at the beach. So now Cyanide Trick's kind of got the economy, trying to transition into a couple owls. I think Gut Shooter started off well. But is new and, you know, made a couple mistakes here and there, like not selling off these, these Warrens, but started to come back and, and sell down a little bit. This artillery gonna help out. Kind of interesting decision with the RD to like maybe help buffer against these constant chameleon run by attacks. They're yeah, gonna get a little damage done there, but chameleons still are able to get in there and knock out that tier 3 Warren. Cyanide Chick just trying to bleed his opponent dry, and unfortunately for Gunshooter, just doesn't have a whole lot of economic options left open. Does have this corner farm that they can still take, but that's about it. So I think Cyanide Trick was gonna wait for these owls to try to end the game but decided to sell one off, go back for these trademark chameleons. That's a lot of toads, though. Well, the toads are trading pretty effectively with the chameleons.
But I think at this point, Cyanide Trick has, has just gotten too many money trades too many times. Got some good value advantage over his opponent. And is the one still mining here. So this should eventually go to Cyanide. There's the tap. And GG. Alright. Geez, we're only on match number five. Okay, let me let me take a, a breather, guys. About a minute 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 or two break. And we'll be back for some more bloodshed. Be right back. Alright, I'm back. <laughs> yeah, my wife is playing the original Xbox Fable. Like, on an actual original Xbox out in the living room. I walk by. It's like, ugh! That resolution! It's so bad. Alright, we've seen a lot of craziness tonight. This might be one you can actually get your notepads out for. Maybe maybe this will be a more serious competitive match. Let me make sure everything's good on my end. Looks like it. Thanks for tuning in. As always, everybody, don't forget we've got the tournament grand finals on Sunday. Tosh and I will be casting that here at noon EST. Okay, let's, let's get into it. Spawning on the left, we've got Dino. And his opponent to the right, Erlu. Okay, Erlu has been quickly rising up as one of the strongest players in the modern Tooth and Tail scene. Gonna go for that crown on Sunday. But Dino's no slouch. I think Dino's been consistently a strong player throughout the ages of TNT so I could see this match going either way I think I think you gotta probably favor Aralu a little bit because his his recent uh, tournament results <clears throat> but you can never count Dino out Dino's a strong player and Aralu rocking a very heavy tier one deck with a couple tier two to back it up trying to have all those options available in the tier one slots in the form of the squirrel lizard toad I think it's interesting we've seen a lot of Toad tonight. I, I was kind of under the impression Toad was maybe a little bit on the weaker side, but I'm curious how, how guys like Erlu and Dainu are, are going to use Toads to their advantage. Are, are the Toads strictly a Lizard counter pick, or are they actually a unit that these players think is viable and, and straight up engagements? Eight farm doubles from both players. Pretty standard stuff here, a little scouting mine. 
being put down from Dino. And there's a lot of options how they're going to take it from here. Are we going to go into 4-5 Tier 1 and apply pressure? Are we going to get that Tier 2 up and running? Are we going to try to take a second base? Erlu's actually in a pretty precarious situation here. Since they have no expansions available to them, they're going to have to put together a one base style that will win this. Either that or get so far ahead they can do something like take this base or ninja take this base up top. But the problem with, with thinking like that, in my opinion, is like if Erlu actually gets this base and start building pigs on it and stuff, like they've basically won the game already because they just have too much map control. Where Dino's in a great spot to, to take a game against against Erlu here and, and probably get a whole bunch of ladder points for it. You know, this is a wonderful spawn for him. He's got plenty of expansion opportunities. He's got this high ground over here to defend against his opponent's uh, attacks. There's only really one attack path into this entire side of the map. Like, if you look at the way the map split, this is a little rough one from Erlu. So yeah, I think Erlu's just kind of powering up, maybe to hit a timing when when they've got the tier 2 ready. Dino going for the ferrets to try to apply pressure and try to maybe bait Erlu into attacking before they're really ready to. Ferret's getting real far out there. You need to be careful. Let's see if Erlu's going to take the engagement. Thinking about it, comes in, snipes at Warren, moves out. And Erlu just really bringing out the entire menagerie of tier 1 units here. Gonna try to get some good toe connections. And those were okay. A lot of those toads actually traded for both sides. But, you know, Erlu's on a clock here. Like, Dino's just gotta keep on keeping on. If Dino can, can stop Erlu from dealing critical damage before that 5 minute mark, you know, it's gonna be rough. And these ferrets are just making things worse. You know, really applying pressure here. Picking off a unit every now and then. It's a big investment. You know, it's a it's a little bit of a hit to your direct army power in a, in a straight up fight. Nice pick off there on that ferret. Great control by Aerolu here. Yeah, both players building up to a decent amount of toads. I mean, there are lizards on both sides, but aerolu has got a little bit more of a, a nice spread. But I think really Erlu's main focus in these engagements is keeping those Falcons alive. The rest of the units are expendable. It'd be nice if the Chameleons live, but if the Chameleon goes down or two, it's to be expected. Really, you just want to make sure you keep those Fal Falcons up. And Oh, Erlu's commander goes down there. That is huge. And Dino is absolutely going to capitalize on this, just deleting the entire army of Erlu. And I wouldn't be surprised if that's a tap out. You know, Erlu's gonna muster up one more attack, but just lost so much value there. Really great control, really great play here by Dino. I think maybe like some snake poison probably got on on Erlu's commander, if I had to guess. Something like that can, can really mess up your your calculation on how much damage your commander can take. Yeah, Erlu's gonna rally up the boys for one more try, and he's gonna get in here and do a lot of damage. This might actually even things out enough to warrant staying in this match, but the Chameleon's... Oh, one Chameleon's actually still up. Really nice job from Erlu coming back into this game. Question is, are they gonna push? Or are they gonna go home? Looks like they're gonna go home and re-rally both players down to, to scraps here. Sell off a war and just rebuild what you can. Dino gonna hang on to these ferrets. It feels inadvisable in these small numbers, but at the same time, doesn't have a lot of choice. Just gonna try to get whatever value with these ferrets that, that he can, but with lizards on the field, I'm, I'm really worried about overextending with these things. Gonna try to get some hits on Erlu, looking for the, the entire surround. 
Dino gonna try to use this Grismill to tank as much as he can, and it actually does work out a little bit. However, there's only the Ferret left for Dino. Both players are starving here. Ferret Warren goes down, Erlu looking for the kill. Erlu really doesn't have any way to not be starving anymore. Oh, I don't think Erlu should have went home. Oh, that was a mistake and doesn't bring the Chameleon with him. I think Erlu could have just won the game right there with, with Micro on that cam. But now Dino is coming in for the counterattack. Oh, Erlu, I think he built that Gristmill just a little too late. Oh my god. This game is going to be like half a second decided. Yeah, I think he, that Gristmill went down. Look, he's got 60 food. He's waiting. He's not going to get it though. Watch. I think he built that Gristmill like half a second too late. Oh, yeah, there it is. That is insane. What a close game. Really good control from both sides. Really neck and neck. Nice victory there from Dino. Okay. That was not a 30 minute game. So that helps balance things out a little bit, time wise. And all in under 10 minutes. I know, right? That's what I'm hyped for. Alright, guys. 2v2, 88th submission here from Mr. Premium Bow, our number one mod. Let's do it. What do we got this match? We've got Premium Bow and Cyanide Trick over on the left. Up top, we've got James and Kerpa. What kind of craziness do we see here? We see some Boar Wolf Artie. I like that. Some Boar Artie. Yep, yep. Wolf Balloon. Okay, okay. Kerpa with the Ferret Owl Mine. Interesting, interesting. Always got to take a look at the production here in the early game. Yeah, there we go. Four Farm, four farm Pigeon. Four Farm Pigeon. Four Farm Cam going down. In, in response to the, the little bit of a feign aggression there from Kerpa. Showing some mole wards and then going home. Kerpa's actually got some really good aggressive play. Uh, I've seen in uh, the last uh, few weeks of replays. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go, Pimpitosh. Alright, what do we got? We got a six farm cam, we got a four farm cam. This definitely is a 2v2. <laughs> the six farm double from James. And a five farm double from P Boop. Uh, Cam and a few squirrels out on the map. We're gonna see if they're gonna do any aggression. Cyanide trick looks like he's trying to find something. We do. We did see it from the previous match. Cyanide trick does love his chameleons and is pretty good at controlling them, finding nice little pockets and openings to get things done. Nice little snipe on that farm. Tries to pick up a lizard, but decides it's not worth the risk. I'm gonna go ahead and just cloak that chameleon. And go on back home. There you go. I need to do 12 one-minute matches next week. Do a 15-minute stream. Can you even do a one-minute match? Like a competitive one-minute match these days? I guess you just have to do like a four-farm triple or something with lizards on a short map. Can we... I think we can roll back all the way. I'll hold that thought. Chameleon's coming in here for some harassment, but Kerpo on top of it. James on top of it. Gonna punish Cyanide Trick. Gonna grab that Chameleon for free. I wonder, I think we can roll the game back all the way to the original balance, can't we? That might be a cool idea for a tournament. Do, like, launch balance tournament or something. With the old school moles. I mean, I like the current balance, you know, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to say launch balance was better or anything, but it might be interesting. Change things up. Like, I know we can roll back to previous patches. But I'm not sure how far back that goes. Nice little pickup there. By side eye, knocking out that tier 2 war, getting a good scout in, seeing blue. Going up to those two bases, premium bow up to two bases. 
Side eggs float a little bit of money, but out in the map, getting things done. Meanwhile, Premium Bow is just macroing up. Kerpa's trying to defend against this constant chameleon aggression. Both times, uh, I mean, that time around, both chameleons went down, though, so nice pickup there for Kerpa. James on the move with some snakes. I'm gonna get pushed back for the time being. All right. James building up an artillery cannon. Has Premium Bow seen this? He should, because he's got the balloon. Yeah. You're not going to be happy about that if you're Premium Bow, but I don't think he can t contest it at the moment. Meanwhile, Kerpa moving out by himself on the side, kind of risking getting 1v2'd here, but I guess if Premium Bow moves out of position too much, it'll leave him open for James to hit him with the counterattack. Yeah, Premium Bow just going to bring the snakes down here to help and, and keep the, the squirrels in position just in case uh, James gets a... Uh, James gets a little trigger happy. And here we go. James is moving in, but the squirrels are here to help defend. But I don't know if it's going to be enough. Premium Bow moving back in. Yeah, he is going to be able to defend this. Good decision making there by P Boop to leave his squirrels there. If he brought his squirrels against Kerpa, he definitely would have lost the balloons and probably the expansion there. Premium Bow trying to move out on the map, get some harassment done with the snakes. Cyanide trick, just building up these cams, man. The cam party. Wolf on the way for Premium Bow. Boar almost here for James, though. Once that boar hits the map, it might trigger a counterattack. That's not uncommon. Premium Bow gonna try to move in, but is gonna get knocked back. That was a, a risky attack going into that artillery. Meanwhile, on the bottom here, red versus blue. These chameleons are pushing through, though. However, James starting to dismantle Premium Bow's expansion. Okay. Cyanide Trick gonna try to come in and bop down this artillery cannon. I think he does have it. A couple of chameleon go down in the process, but nice pick up there. So many mines on the map here from Kerpa, just trying to really have coverage against any sort of side attacks, counter attacks, run buys, that sort of thing. Nice scouting getting done here by Cyanide, just trying to see exactly what's going on from his opponent's perspective. And gonna go ahead and get in here with these cams, knocking down this gristmill very nicely done. Ooh, and gonna be able to sneak out scot free. Meanwhile, Premium Bow's got the, the Zoomy Boys. The Broomy Vipers. Ooh, gonna barely live there. A couple pigeons at home. Gonna help keep those snakes alive. And Kerpa's not in good shape now. Starving after those, those chameleons from Cyanide got in there and sniped that mill down. Nobody's got a particularly strong economy in this game. It, it's kind of scrappy, and it, it's kind of been like... A bit of a split 1v1 almost. Red versus blue are really going at it, and green and yellow are, are also as well. And Premium Bow's just trying to get in here with these snakes and knock out this this boar. He's not going to be able to get the boar, but is going to knock out the snakes of his opponent, so at least trades tit for tat there. Yeah, that's so many chameleons. Yeah, I'm pretty sure these eight chameleons could just beat this army right. I don't know with this kind of engagement, though. That wasn't the prime engagement for red, but still gonna get a lot of damage done in here. 
only losing half the chameleons too. James trying to get over, but doesn't quite get there in time to, to help out his buddy. The Vroomy boy is coming back in. The speedy snakes. Nice snipe on that Warren by those snakes there. Very well done. Cyanide Tricks trying to rinse and repeat. Kerpa seems hip to it, but just can't really stop it. Doesn't really have anything to, de to defend against it anymore. So I think Cyanide Trick is slowly going to win this by just beating Kerpa down over and over with these chameleons. You know, Kerpa's trying to muster up something. And James still has a reasonable force, has a good economy. But is shortly going to be in a 2v1 position. I like this strategy from Premium Bow here. Just. Letting these snakes get that wolf buff running in super fast, trying to poison some things and running out. James realizes he's going to have to get some damage done to win this game. Trying to run by with these lizards, but getting hit right by those chameleons. Going to take some serious damage until they all eventually do get cleaned up here. And here Sinai goes again. On his own, going down the only road he's ever known. Kerpa trying to return the favor here with some chameleon harassment of his own. Actually going to get a lot done with those. Probably even take out the mill. Oh, but, oh I was gonna was curious if Cyanide was going to jump on that boar. But no, decides to keep his chameleons alive. <clears throat> that was actually really big damage, though, that Kerpa just managed to get done. Because now it's going to be difficult for Cyanide Trick to get out of starvation, and Kerpa's just going to go for the throat. I don't think he's going to get it, but it's very close. Almost knocking Cyanide Trick out. Meanwhile, James tries to attack Premium Bow, but just lost too much. Taps out. Premium Bow and Cyanide Trick take the match. All right. Let's keep it rolling. Match number seven. Spying up on the double high ground. In the middle of the map, we've got Pixon. Over to the right, the gentleman. Man, I got deja vu for a second. We haven't seen this one before, have we? I don't think we have. I think I would have remembered Gentleman with the Fox. I really like Gentleman's deck. I might have to steal it. I love this, uh, the Ferret Fox defense playstyle. Interesting way to go about it with the Barbed Wire Balloon. I haven't really tried that combo before. The Barbed Wire only costing 10 food these days. Maybe it's a little bit more viable. And, and the fact that Lizards are really meta. That certainly helps. The Barbed Wires do a good job against those Lizards. Pretty short rush distances here. So I'm curious if we'll see some aggression out of these players. Pigson, yeah, gonna do a little switcheroo here. Go for a seven farm lizard. Gonna try to catch the gent. Maybe when Pigson's got a couple lizards out before his opponent does. Come in there, snipe a pig. I mean, Jit really can't even pivot at this point. But I don't think it's gonna matter, right? Like... Let's see. Let's see if Pixon's gonna, gonna teach us something here. Because the Jit just opened an 8 farm double, right? Yeah, I don't, I don't think... Yeah, it's not gonna be consequential to 7 farm Warren. So that gives Gent like a eensy... teensy economic lead. Ooh, careful there. Oh, oh, the Jint is not hitting those mines. That's actually really unfortunate. Oh, there it goes. One goes down for Pixon because he tried to bait him back, right? Into the mines. Uh, but, you know, we know everything's said and done. It's a reasonable trade for both sides. Oh, 
A little bit of barbed wire coming up here from Jen. And when do we try to take a fox? Or are we not even super worried about getting the fox out? Are we trying to go for some ferret? <clears throat> like, the thing that I prefer about Pixon's deck is he's got the cams in there, right? So for the gentleman, you know, if you're, he doesn't really have another option besides going for fox ferret, or at least ferret. You know, he doesn't have the cams or falcons or something like that in the deck if the ferret fox approach isn't viable. However, there is merit to that as well. You know, if you're going to do something, don't half-ass it, right? So the gentleman's deck is very, very on point with one specific style. Lots and lots of barbed wire coming in. And it's going to be great on this map because this nice little tiny choke surrounded by water on both sides. This is some fantastic positioning here for barbed wire and the balloon going down to protect it. Oh, man, I love that. Love that barbed wire balloon combo. That's really cool. Definitely gonna gonna steal this one. Nice sell there. Not gonna risk that ferret knocking down that balloon, which is unfortunate because that balloon going up would have been a super hard counter to this ferret. However, the gent can still get a balloon up eventually. And it's just gonna get a little bit of scouting done. And even gonna sneak that base. Interesting. Now, Pixon's just on one base eco at the moment and gonna trade these lizards into this barbed wire. And it's actually pretty ineffective because remember, this barbed wire only costs 10 food. <laughs> Gentleman jumping up on his opponent. Getting this critical mass of Squizzard going on. Fox is on the way here. Fox is a great way to deal with the ferret. But these chameleons are going to add a lot of brute force value to this army. This is what I was worried about for the gent. He doesn't have any just straight up strong in the direct engagement tier 2 here to contest a push in like this. You know, maybe gent deck should, should not have squirrels, as weird as that sounds. Like, do you go lizard, chameleon, ferret? I don't know. Jin's under some pressure, but if he can get the, the fox out, that should be all he needs with some good micro to get back into this game. Then again, Pixon does have chameleons, does have mines, does have lizards. These are all things that can really deal with that fox effectively. But so far, this is looking good for Pixon. This is his chance. He's got to get some critical damage here. The fox is now on the board. This is gentleman's time to recover. Oh, is he gonna? Oh, he hits the cam. Oh my gosh. Nice job there by Pixon with the cam trap. Gent coming up. He's gonna grab a farm, come back. And keep in mind, we're well past the five minute mark. Pixon was never able to secure a second base. I think he could have easily taken this one if he chose to. But he's really going for this one base all in here. And if that's the case, he's kind of got to win right here, right now. But the army are so small, and Gentleman's got the fox. And when somebody with good micro has got that fox, it can be super rough. I still don't think Gent knows about these mines, though. So maybe if he gets a little bit too aggressive... Kind of walks up, you know, kind of a little cocky. He might get blown up there. Oh, this guy. <laughs> You've missed, uh, missed some crazy long matches. If you're just joining us here. Looking at the uptime. Alright, Pixon did find that hidden base from Gent. Gonna run up there with his lizards. Try to knock it out. Jin's trying to get in position to defend it. But Pixon's now starving. I think Pixon could have had a good shot of winning this game if, if he was able ever able to secure an expo. Ah, uh, look at that. That is so... Such value. Much wow. Oh, 
Oh, now you're, there he goes. Nice shot on that that ferret. This is just going from bad to worse here for Pixton. Gonna try to get that. He's got the expo up, but he just can't afford to sell anything really to get it there. And I think this is gonna be match point here for Gent. Pixton was pretty close earlier on. He took a really strong engagement with his chameleons, but the gentleman, being the gentleman, was able to claw his way back into it. Okay, match number eight. Let's go. Oh, let's not go. Sorry, Jet. Oh, wait, what? Oh, I thought it was gonna work that time. Yeah, sorry, Jet. No Jet game for you. It's unfortunate, I was looking forward to that one. All right, match number nine then. Let's do that one. In the bottom right, we've got Mochaccino. And two left, QQ. We got some big boy boars, some big daddy boars. Both sides here, some cams. Uh, pretty interesting decks here, three units overlapping. I think both these are fine. Interesting seeing no lizards here. Pigeons are a neat pick as well. I don't think pigeons are necessary for like the boar plays and stuff like that, but they can really add a lot of value to prolonged engagements, you know, even before the boar when you got things like chameleons out there or even falcons. Just being able to, to keep the pressure on, not have to retreat all the way back home to heal your units up. <clears throat> that can make a big difference. And QQ rocking those moles, which have fallen a little bit out, out of style in the, the modern meta. Well, let's see what QQ gets done with them here. Players both kind of in each other's faces. Ooh, interesting opening here for Mochaccino. Gonna go for a 7 farm tier 2. I think they forgot to take the 8th farm. Oh no, sometimes that can happen if you're not paying super close attention because the way that... That top farm is kind of blocked by the artwork of the gristmill. I don't think Mochaccino is going for a 7 farm tier 2 into tier 1 on purpose. But it does happen. It's happened to me a couple times. Nice scouting here by Mochaccino. Going to try to get the lay of the land. Meanwhile, QQ already knows pretty much what's up. As far as map layout goes, I think they were probably going to try to hit this t right corners to see what's over there, but Commander went down beforehand. And this is a pretty good macro opening here from QQ. I like these these plays a lot, especially in the modern meta where like Lizards and Tier 1 Aggression is so common. If you're going to do a Grismal opening... You gotta be kind of no-nonsense about it. You're not trying to sneak out Tier 2s and things like that. He's just gonna go for a lot of Tier 1 here to back that up, but... Mochaccino going for the hit! Trying to get a timing with these Tier 2 cams, and gonna already pick up a Falcon... Or, a uh, farm, rather. Mochaccino still hasn't taken that 8th farm! That's super rough. QQ's got a lot of units here to defend. Gonna go on the aggression. Gonna have to target these cams down very quickly to win this engagement. Nicely done there by QQ. Still a whole bunch of tier one left over. I'm gonna take a decent trade, but Mochaccino is gonna stand strong and be able to defend this natural expansion. Well, I don't even think that's a natural, really. Like, that's a very aggressive mill, but it's kind of in a weird spot where it's like, if it was a tank mill, it'd probably be this one. Like, I don't think he's going to build farms on it, right? Maybe he could have easily taken this mill over here. Going to wait for those additional cams. Oh, man. Not having that 8th farm is hurting my soul here. Good target fire, though. From both sides, Mochaccino, Mochaccino gonna clean it up. Keep the pressure on his opponent.
I mean, I guess having that Gristmill there allows Mokuchino to have additional territory, which is going to heal all the units, which is pretty nice. QQ gonna try to get the cams out. It's a risky play. Let's see if they have enough time <clears throat> to be able to get there. And Mokuchino's still coming in. It's a lot of squirrels. And this might just break the camels back here. Gonna go home for now. Yeah, this Grismo must just be here for proxy purposes and for healing. Kinda interesting. I think Mokuchino could have probably pushed in for the win there. It looked like they had the tempo. But it's easy to say that as the observer who can see everything and has all the knowledge. I think it was safer. Safe play here by Mokuchino. Gonna try to stranglehold this victory. And he got the cams out. But QQ has been given enough time to get his own cams. And is gonna try to even go up to four, which is kind of the deadly number. As another big engagement comes down. All the cams going down. But Mokuchino with a ton of tier one left over. And that's probably gonna be it for QQ. Nicely done. GG. Okay, we got a few more for you here tonight. I think these should be a little bit more serious matches compared to some some of the crazy stuff we've seen tonight. So, if you're new or if you're looking for some competitive tips, these are these are definitely the matches to uh, to take the notepad out for. So let's see it. Match number ten. Oh no! There's another another error. Why am I getting so many errors? Feels bad, man. That's okay. We we missed two replays for errors, but we also had two replays that were like 50 minutes <laughs> for just the two of them. Hopefully we don't get any more errors though. So I do really want to see these. That's a shame. I was really looking forward to this guy versus Kalara. Ugh. What a tease. Alright. Match number 11. Is this going to work? Awesome. They, oh, the games might have been from PTR. You're right. We'll try that. We'll try that after game 12. That's a good point. Thank you. In the bottom left, we've got Big Pimpintosh. And to the right, we've got Gentleman. What are the PTR... What are the PTR changes right now? Let me see if I can look those up. So Tosh is going for that pile style here with Squizzard rather than just Lizard straight defense. And meanwhile, Gent looks to be experimenting, you know, trying out different things. He's got that ferret fox barbed wire balloon style again but this time around opting for the owl as well and uh, yeah he dropped the squirrels which i think is the right move but i'd love to see like a chameleon in that slot then over the owl uh, you know it's it's uh it's testing here and so let's see ptr stuff let's talk about that while well, this game is getting going. So far, nothing too crazy. Seven farm. Oh, wait. Actually, yeah, there's plenty of crazy stuff. What am I talking about? Maybe I should pay attention to the replay at hand here. As Big Pimpintosh, Dirty Boy, has successfully got the rush off, the, the turret rush here. Basically, our equivalent of a cannon rush. And is the balloon going to go down? The barbed wire buys just enough time. And Big Pimpintosh is in such a good position to annoy the hell out of the gentleman. He's also got a turret at home. Gent is going to wait. I think all six lizards could break the turret, but four, it is a little bit dicey. However, Tosh can't necessarily end the game here. Smart by the gentleman to just pack up, shop, and go somewhere else. It's also kind of nice where these lizards were placed, not in range of like an artillery or anything like that from the proxy base of Tosh. And yeah, these lizards are going to bust through that turret. Ooh, doesn't quite get that last pig. So we've got a, a weird 
weird game on our hands here. Tosh did get a couple Warrens up at this proxy base. And the balloon sneaking forward is going to pick off even more pigs. But is Tosh aware of the other base from Gent? He isn't yet, but he probably wouldn't be crazy surprised to, to find out about it. These squirrels doing a good job against the lizard so far. And yeah, these squirrels should just easily be able to finish this base off. Tosh definitely needs to take a farm at his uh, new proxy base over here. Just to make sure Gent can't go snipe his other one. Alright. Oh, I, I kind of hope those uh, PTR changes. I, I mean, I hope those two replays that didn't work actually are on the PTR. That'd be really cool to, to take a look at a couple of those games. Jint actually looks like he's in position to win this game. He, he did a really good job of getting that other base up and running very quickly, amassing a large amount of lizards pretty appropriately. And all he's, that's standing between him and a victory here is one last turret by Tosh, but he needs to get in there right now before these warrants have a chance to produce any, any squirrels here. We... Gotta be careful, he doesn't have a whole lot of lizards. Gonna try to come in from the right angles. <laughs> oh, can't quite finish his opponent off, however. All right, the gent, six lizards here, looking for the killing blow. Really cool strategy here from Tosh. Tosh has uh, shown us some neat stuff all night, but Jen's gonna take it. <clears throat> all right, let's see if we can, let's try to hop over to the PTR real quick and see if, uh... so it was Jet and this guy, it was these two matches. All right, so let me put on this break screen. We're not going on a break. We are just testing something. So yeah, thanks everybody as always for tuning in. As I'm sure all of you are aware, we've got the grand finals of the 21 Generals on Sunday on this channel at 12 p.m. EST with me and Big Pimp and Tosh Kasten. Let's hop over the PTR. And I, do, I am in need of replays, guys. So for next Friday night, don't be shy, send those replays in to me. Toothandtailtv at gmail.com is a preferred way to submit. You can also message them to me on Discord. But I really do prefer it if you email them to me. Sometimes I forget who messages them to me on Discord and will miss them that way. All right, we are on the PTR. Now does it work? No. Or this one? Nope. Alright, good theory. Good theory. But, didn't work. Oh, black screen. Sorry. Put that up. There we go. Alright, let's get back on live. <laughs> oh no, fake replays. Okay, so that means we've got one more for y'all tonight. Thanks, as always, for tuning in, everybody. I always appreciate it. Uh, bam. We're going to end on a good note here. I saved, uh... Saved a quite good one for last. Maybe if I take it off the break screen, that'll help. Hey, why is it black screen? There we go. I actually just want to talk a little bit about these PTR changes. I don't like going too much into this stuff. But I'll give you the, the Delphius thoughts on what's going on. Take it with a grain of salt. 
Alright, so we got a mole change. First mole spawning as soon as the warrant is finished and the mole is paid for. And, and the mole is paid. So I guess that means if you have 20 food, yeah, it'll spawn immediately. That's pretty cool. I think that the idea with that change is to give moles viability in one or two, one of two different ways. One, obviously, being mole rushes, making those a little more competitive. And two, maybe mole can be one of these, like, oh, crap button kind of units. You know, you might keep it in your deck. It's like, ah, you know, if I was trying to go for the tier three and that fell through and now I'm getting attacked, let me build a bunch of mole warrants so I get some units out ASAP. Lizard's getting a 1 HP nerf. Interesting. Uh, lizards are definitely strong right now. I'd have to review where that'll actually come into play. Like squirrels, for example, deal two damage a shot, right? So it's not going to make a difference on that. Skunks, gas canisters hit slightly faster, especially if the target is nearby. Okay, so probably like projectile speed. Chameleon. Uh, HP nerf. I think people would agree with that. Let me see, Falcon, looks like a burst change. 12 bullets over 1.2 seconds and they reload from 10 bullets over one second, reload for once, interesting. So it's like a, a weighted, so Falcon nerf, Falcon DPS reduction. A little bit of a bore, HP reduction. Which is kind of interesting because it's like, the boar is getting nerf, which is what deals with lizards. Right, but the lizards are getting nerfed. So, huh. And the tier three and artillery. Oh, 40 second build production time for tier three. What? Oh man, that's a Delthius change. Are you telling me Fox Rush might be viable? Is that what you're saying to me with that? And flying over grist mills, air units can no longer be over the grist mill. Yeah, they can't put a tile over. I agree with that. I honestly, I think the craziest change is the uh, 40 second build for tier three. Because tier three timings, like making a tier three timing attack 20 seconds faster is gonna be nuts, but that's that's cool. I don't I don't mind those changes. Four farm fox, baby, yeah. Hey, thanks for the follow. Just a man from 2000, I appreciate it. All right, all right. I guess, well, yeah, yeah. I think that's all the announcements. Keep sending me replays so I can keep doing these shows. We're gonna have the grand finals of the tournament on Sunday. That's about all I got, guys. Let's hop into this last match. Let's get it. Oh man, if that re if that replay was broken, I'd have been so mad. At the bottom, we've got James. And his opponent two left. Erlu. All right, this is a pretty high level match we got going on here. James rocking that double tier three with a really cool combo that Badger Wolf. If you're gonna do double tier three, that's definitely the way to do it. And meanwhile, Erlu is rocking like a no-nonsense, super strong deck. I think Squirrel, Lizard, Falcon, Chameleon is very, very powerful at the moment. Those last two picks, you can kind of throw in whatever you want and you'd probably be okay. Pigeon, Skunk here for Erlu, giving him a lot of options. You can go for that, you know, Skunk, Pigeon, Push. You can go for Chameleon Aggression. He can just go for a ton of tier one in the form of Squizzard. And if the game goes too long, he's got the Falcons to round things out. Meanwhile, James looks good as well. No Lizards, which in the current meta is a bit of a hamstring on yourself. But to make up for that, of course, he's got those chameleon Chameleons there. Very power powerhouse unit. You gotta sacrifice something. You know, to fit those pigeons and that double tier three in, and the lizard was the choice. I think it could have probably gone without falcons. Like maybe I'd I'd like to see Squizzard over that, but you know, James is better than I am, so. But I feel like the late game comp for James is gonna be Badger Wolf. But I guess there are situations where you would want the Falcon over the Cam. So just having that in the in the deck is nice. All right, James sees Erlu's going for a quick expo, and Erlu is gonna also put on some pressure here. With the lizards, actually gonna get some value, maybe. Nice pick up on that squirrel. Yeah, gonna get this warren as well. So that's 80 food, and a delay in production here for Erlu. Already looking good for 
the tournament finalist. Chameleon's on the way. James is looking to return the favor with a sneaky boy out on the map. It can be really difficult to deal with Chameleons. I Honestly, one thing I didn't say about the PTR, you'll also have to note that like instead of nerfing the cams, they might try out ner uh, making it take twice as long, go from a quarter of a second to a half second for the restall. I almost kind of like that better, to be honest, to give you a chance to counterplay against some of the Chameleon stealth harassment since there is no stealth detection in the game. Making it a little bit harder for the Chameleons to get that re-stealth off might be the, the better solution. I don't know. <clears throat> but Erlu's looking to be in a really good spot this game. Picked off that Chameleon earlier. Since James, James kind of made the mistake there though to be fair. He lost his commander by being a little bit too greedy. You know, Erlu got the Warren for free earlier as well, so Erlu is kind of up in money at the moment, but nice little turnaround there from James, getting him back in this just slightly. But Erlu is definitely still ahead. And Erlu is trying to keep the pressure on. I think that's what really separates like great tooth and tail players from the best is is just the killer instinct. You know, we see that a lot in some of the upper echelon players. You know, guys like the gentlemen come to mind, or DJ Soak in the older days, or Chip, or Pyle. They just have a really good understanding of when I'm ahead by just enough to keep the pressure on. Because Tooth and Tail actually has a lot of comebacks mechanics in the game. I mean, I lose games all the time by kind of trying to have fun, you know? Thinking like, oh, I've won this game, so I'm going to do something silly. And But you give your opponent a chance to come back when you do that. and It doesn't take long to bridge the gap. Like like this, for example, you know, James coming in, picking up a pig, rinse and repeat. But if you have like a 200 food lead at like 3 or 4 minute mark, and you don't end the game, you know, if it's 7 or 8 or 9 minutes... The 200 food isn't as significant because it's a smaller drop in the bucket. It's a smaller percentage of the overall food that both players have accumulated. Therefore, it's a smaller advantage. But I don't think Erlu was like so far ahead this game that they, you know, didn't strike in. I just kind of wanted to go on that tangent. But this game's actually pretty neck and neck at the moment. This could go either way. The Wolf is trying to get out here for James. James keeping the pressure on. That, that's kind of an interesting way to defend while you have the tier three is keep the aggression on. Like if James comes over here with the cams or something, now Erlu's got to come all the way over here. It's just buying him time. Like all Erlu, or all James is looking for is another 30 to 40 seconds to get that Wolf on the board. But Erlu. Going for eight cams, man. These chameleons, when you get up to the critical number of them, can just be really intense. You know, even the difference between like two and four chameleons is insane. And James is going for that wombo combo. Going for the dream. I would love to see it, man. If we ended the night on a double tier three play, I would be so happy. That's good stuff. That's that's what I want to see. I mean, I still can't believe we might be going to 40-second Tier 3s. That's cool, you know, because we don't see as much Tier 3. You know, because of the current meta. But at the same time, it's like so many things are changing. Like, the Lizard and Chameleon change might be enough to let Tier 3 breathe back into the meta, you know. We'll see. This is a big force moving out from Erlu though, and this is a nice timing before the Badger hits so many Chameleons here. And 20 Squirrels to back him up. The Wolf is here, but it isn't going to be enough. A lot of beefed up units, but not a whole lot of them remaining here for, for James. Erlu busting through. The expansion is down. Really, James' only chance to win this. The only reason he hasn't tapped out is because the Badger is cooking. The Badger's almost here, but it might be a little bit too late. 
as Erlu is just gonna bust through. Oh, the Badger gets out, but can it do it? Oh my god, it might actually do it. Oh my god. Oh my god, James. <laughs> that is hilarious. The Badger gets out, immediately gets buffed up by the Wolf, rampages through the forces of Erlu. On the way to the front lines, James snags that Grismal. He's gonna have to sell off something, but he will be able to build another farm. I can't believe. I can't believe James is gonna win this. Five HP left on this batter. Yes, this is what I wanted. This is a great way to end the night. Man, if Airly would have striked like a half a second earlier, he would have just won the game. I didn't think the badger getting out would be enough, but that that wolf buff going off on it at the right time. Oh, he actually he sold the badger. Did he have to sell the badger? He must have had to. Have. Yeah, that must have been the only warren he had left. All the other warrens must have been destroyed. So maybe Erlu actually does win this. Because that badger was kind of the capstone here. Gotta keep this falcon alive. It's at 2 HP. Oh my god. Alright, no, I think James. Maybe James has it. One falcon, a wolf, and, and four squirrels. Let's go. That falcon living. This was so clutch for James on so many fronts. It's insane. Had to sell the badger. That's crazy. I didn't look that closely at the base. I figured he could just sell a tier one warren or something. But yeah, that was the only warren he had left. And Erlu gets the snipe on the farm. James is starving. Now Erlu's in a similar position. The only way Erlu can not be starving is if he sells his cams, and he knows that's just not an option. So he's trying to come in here and, and give James the the ring around the the ring around the rosy. <laughs> Pocket full of chameleons. Ooh, one of them de stealths and gets picked off. Oh no, it actually managed to come back. I thought for sure it was gonna die. Alright, James is gonna have to sell uh, sell his last Warren to get a farm. James just bringing the one. Oh no, Erlu doesn't have to sell. He's got a he's got a farm cooking. One chameleon goes down. This is so close, man. This is crazy. Picks off that squirrel. Oh, this wolf by itself. Oh, if that farm goes down, that's it. James has nothing left. He's got one falcon. One falcon and a wolf versus one chameleon. He's got to win the game right here, but I think he can. This chameleon going to try to get the work done, but he's not going to out DPS this buffed up falcon. James doesn't want to waste any time killing that pig. He's just going to go for the gristmills. I think that's smart. He doesn't have time. Every millisecond counts here. Both players... Not enough money to rebuild a, a farm. No warrens to sell. This bird flapping its little wings off. The chameleon. All right, this falcon should out DPS this this chameleon. What a crazy match. Oh my god, good thing I saved this one for last. This one was awesome. Look how close that was. That was insane. What a good way to end the night. All right, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. You're all a bunch of beautiful nerds. We'll see you on Sunday. I am going to go relax. Yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do. Eat some food. Hang out with, with the wife. Yeah, that was crazy, man. That was a really good game. That clutch badger coming out, like, right at the right time. That was ridiculous. Alright, everybody. Take care. Have a good night. Have a good Saturday. And we will catch you guys back here on Sunday for the 21 Generals finale between Haru and Erelu. Take care, everybody. <laughs>